trouble Sunday. Amen. <laughs> uh, Brother Daniel asked them, uh, me to sing. They don't do that too often in places, but I'm going to do it. Amen. When I first came to Dallas, I actually sung a little, but uh, we're going to sing an old song. Most of the ones I know is what I used to sing with my mother, my stepdad, and uh, folks back home. And we're going to sing one this morning. I'm glad that he's not only with us now, but he'll be with us at the end of this journey. And that if, if we can't have that confidence in the end of life, then the Christian faith is not much to it anyway. But he's going to hold our hand when we get to the end of this thing. So worship the Lord with us. Someday when I travel my last mile here, the call will be coming for me. I'll enter the lifeboat that shall be near to carry me over. to live while the ages shall roll. For I want to see my Jesus and the saints of your in heaven, that sweet home of the soul. And he'll hold to
Hallelujah. Great God, hallelujah. It's going to be worth it all, folks. I said it's going to be worth it all. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Aren't you glad for count meeting? The presence of the Lord here this morning. And I made a statement yesterday. I'm going to stand by it. I'm so thankful that he can still convict my heart. Amen. You said, preacher, did he deal with you this morning? Oh, what did he deal with you about? It's took care of now. <laughs> Amen. I was in my house one day praying. One morning. I was in the living room, which I usually don't pray in the living room, but I was there praying. And I said to him, there's no need for me to try to convince you that I'm something that I'm not. There's no need for me to try to tell you that there aren't some things here because you know everything about me. And I said to him, I confess everything you have me charged with. I'm guilty. Amen. Because, folks, we do nothing in secret. We don't even think in secret. He knows it all. I'm glad for his mercy, though, aren't you, this morning? Turn with me to Matthew chapter 1. I want to thank these uh, men of God and thank God for them. And thank them for being obedient to the heavenly vision. And being led of the Spirit of God to preach His Word. And like Brother Speed says about going over to Africa and other places, he said, I brought more back. Well, I'm telling you what, I'm going to leave here today this week taking more back than I brought I can assure you amen God has certainly spoke to our hearts thank you brother Shortridge sister Shortridge for hosting this meeting for the Dallas Church of God for all the effort and labor prayer that you put into it I appreciate so much and for the grand invitation to be here and uh, thank all you for coming and we appreciate you very very much this nation as our brother dealt with this morning so you believe that preacher that this is a nation under judgment as sure as I'm standing here in this pulpit do you believe that judgment is soon as sure as I'm standing in this pulpit do you believe that we really comp comprehend how severe it is no we do not comprehend. But it, beyond our ability to even imagine, it's coming. And the many reasons, the murder, the perversion, and the rejection. And the rejection is not of God or a God because you can believe in God a God you can mention the name God because that name could mean any God you, you, you could be talking about a lot of gods and they don't really care about that you can pray in the name of God and that means everybody out there can take that personally as their own God. You won't get in trouble for that. And, um, but when you narrow it down to the God, the Son of God, that's a whole different story. They don't necessarily hate a God, but they hate him. And he said, because they hate me, 
And this is Middle Tennessee, or East, he puts me in Eastern Tennessee. I'm actually in Middle Tennessee, Middle Tennessee vernacular. There ain't much difference in it, I can tell you. Uh, he said, they hate me, they're going to hate you. I've never seen a people that hate his name more than this generation. Come on. You, you can't mention it now. The chaplains in the military are not supposed to pray in his name. In, in school, they don't want his name mentioned at all. And in some churches, they're changing their, the way that they preach in their little sermonettes as not to offend. So this morning, I'm going to tell you another reason the judgment's coming, but I'm going to talk to you. This morning in closing about a name that's like no other. And he said in Matthew 1 and verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus was on this wise. When his, as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph before they came together. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived of her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and shall, thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he, he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord of the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name, say it with me, Jesus. Father, thank you for what you have said to us and have done in us these days. There's no way that we can articulate it and tell it. And some of it's too personal between you and us. But we thank you, God, because that conviction is merciful. We praise you for it. Thank you for the fellowship of the saints. Thank you for the Holy Ghost here today. But I want to confess, if you don't help me, I'll fail. I pray, Lord, that you'll give me fresh unction, fresh oil. That you would anoint the people to hear, their ears to hear, and hearts to receive. And anoint our minds that our thoughts would not be taken captive of the enemy. And I'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it all. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. What a name. There's a song that they came out with a few years ago that said, Jesus Jesus, there's just something about that name. You know, in the Old and New Testament times, it was a very common and ordinary name. Actually, it was the Greek rendering of Joshua. Now, on that street that Jesus lived on, there were perhaps other little Jewish boys running around with the same name as his. But this was different because even though it was a common name, there is glory and majesty in it because it was given to him by God, the father, God, the creator in Matthew one and 21, he said, and he shall bring forth the son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. It means Jehovah, the savior. You know, the prophets of old had foretold his coming. Now, I want to I preach this this morning in the light 
of a nation that has become ag antagonistic, you know, against him and, and the name of Jesus. In a nation, and a government that actually we have in power today, whether it be Democrat or Republican, I, I've come to the conclusion that, uh, folks, if your hope is in politics and in elections from here on out, you are in a heap of trouble. Say amen. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's a different day. It's a different time. But uh, in a nation that where, you know, we have, our brother mentioned the belief of many paths to God. But the thing about that is, Barack Obama believes that there are many paths to God. But did you know that George Bush Jr., the previous president, also believed that there were many ways to God. I heard that with my own ears. He said it in an interview. He said, I believe that there, yes, there are other ways to God. He said, mine just happens to be Christianity, just happens to be Jesus Christ. No, no, it is only through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Because the coming of God in the flesh had been designed and planned before there was even a world. Amen. A world like ours. In 1 Peter 1 and 20 said, Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. And Isaiah, the prophet of God, said in 9 and 6, that For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. But you know, there had to be, there had to be the incarnation, the revelation of God through that Word made flesh. Because now, for the first 4,000 years, you know, our brother talked about the fear of the Lord this morning and the fear of God. And, and without that fear, you know, you, again, there, there can be no true salvation and no grace for the first 4,000 years that the fear of God is how man served the Lord mostly out of that fear and and there has to be and I thank God for the fear of God but God the creator wanted mankind not only yes not only he wanted them to fear him yes but to also love him and have fellowship with him but you know I've come to the understanding you cannot love God without fearing God say amen that you and, and you may be able to fear him as some did but still not love him but you cannot love him without fearing him and the first 4,000 years but 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 this could not be that intimate fellowship as long as he the creator was wrapped in a glory cloud or hidden in some veil behind the temple somewhere this could not be that that enter that uh, you know mean that uh, I'm, I'm looking for the word that has eluded me this morning but that intimacy I should say with the Almighty with the Creator but God was so holy that there could be no interaction with the sinful humanity beyond what we read about maybe with Moses you know where Moses saw him in a, a cloudy pillar you know at night or a pillar of fire at night or somewhere hid in the crevice of a rock he saw his back parts as he passed by. But God wanted to interact with his creation, but not at a distance, but like with John. You know, would you see him at the supper laying his head on the breast of the very one that had been there, that had created heaven and earth? Can somebody say amen? You know, you say, preacher, why are you talking about Jesus was born, you know, some 2,000 years ago? I can tell you, I, I am a believer in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I am Trinitarian. But he was before the foundation of the world. He has always been. And can somebody say amen? But when you look at history, you see that the incarnation could not have happened uh, sooner than it did. The world had to progress to the time of Jesus to work, if you will. In Isaiah 7 and 14, he said, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call 
call his name Emmanuel. In Matthew 1, 23, that verse 23 of our text said that virgin shall conceive and shall bring forth a son. So, but God wanted to be loved. Not only, you know, listen, he wanted to be loved. He wanted to have an intimate relationship with his creation. He did not want that to be at a distance. He did not want that just to be in a pillar of fire or a burning bush or stuck in the crevice of a rock as he passed by so that man could get a glimpse of his back parts. But he wanted to have an intimate relationship. So Mary, one day, uh, an angel appeared to her and said this. He said, listen, you're going to have a baby and that baby is going to come. And she said, well, how can this thing be? Seeing that I've never known a man. And the angel said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And that holy thing which is born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Can you say amen? Not a Son of God, but the Son of God. You know, that word Emmanuel simply meant God with us. He was fully man, but yet fully God. Somebody said, explain that preacher. If I could, I'd write a book and sell a million copies. Uh, you know, it's like trying to explain the Trinity. You know, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I've seen people stab at that a lot and, 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 you know, try to convince you of their great intelligence. But I can tell you, if I could explain that to you in, in the, full, you know, fullness of the, the, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and the mystery of that, again, I'd write a book. I'd be a part of the Godhead. But I'm just telling you that, that's the, you know, it is that way. But one old commentator wrote, and said what a happy step is hereby taken we're going somewhere so hold on uh, the settling of peace and correspondence between God and man that the two natures are thus brought together in the person of the mediator in this by this he became an unexceptionable referee a dazed man fit to lay hand upon them both since he is partakers of the natures of both uh, he behold in this the deepest mystery and the richest mercy that ever was. By the light of nature we see God as a God above us. By the light of the law we see him as a God against us. By the light of the gospel we see him as Emmanuel, God with us in our own nature which is more in our interest. Hallelujah. Wherein and herein the Redeemer commended his love toward you and I. Yes, he was more than the son of a, a virgin Jewish maid, a spouse to Joseph a, a carpenter he was more you know he was God coming to commune with his creation to be their Savior and their Lord it is an impossibility as our brother mentioned that for him to be Savior without being Lord I was at a gospel sing some years ago and a lady was testifying and she was talking about her years astray and she said for all those years he was Lord of my salvation but not Lord of my life. And I said, that is an impossibility. Say amen. That is an impossibility. But Jesus said this. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. I talk what he talks. I think like he thinks. I do the works that he tells me to do and what I have seen him do. Therefore, in his matchless name is all power in heaven and in earth. In Philippians 2 and 9, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Hallelujah to God. Now folks, if I was the devil, I'd be doing exactly what the devil's doing right now. I would do everything within my power and ability to try to take that name out of the vernacular of the church and out of, of the hope of the church. I'd try to take that name away. If I was the devil in this nation, moving in this nation, I would do everything I could to despise that name and turn people against that name. I would do everything within my ability to take it out of the school system. I'd do everything within my ability to keep the chaplains from praying 
praying in the name of Jesus in the military. Say amen. I'd do everything I could to keep the name of Jesus out of the halls of Congress and out of City Hall and every hall. Come on now. Because there is no greater name in heaven and in earth. All power in heaven and in earth is invested in the mighty, matchless, wonderful name of Jesus Christ. It, because it is the name that is above all sin, the name of Jesus. In 1 John 2 and 12, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Hallelujah to God. Have you ever watched those uh, uh, videos or whatever there, the, what do they call it, the Gang, Ganges River there in India? You know, they come by the tens of thousands to that festival every year. And they their belief is they wade out into that old polluted river that's got sewage in it and yeah, my, the dirt, one of the dirtiest rivers in the world. And their belief is that they wade out into that river and that their sins of the previous year have been washed away. Oh my God, I'm glad to know that when I was a drug addict that I didn't have to base my hope on washing in some old river there in Middle Tennessee to wash my sins away. People say, preacher, you, you just don't know. You know, I, I've run into those trying to pray for them in the altars and especially earlier on. And, and you, for some reason, they just didn't get through and they were struggling in that altar. You're trying to pray them through to salvation. And they say, you don't know what I've done. You don't know how bad I've been. You don't know the horrible sins that I've committed. And, and, you know, the tragedy is that a lot of the modern Pentecostal fundamental church has created an atmosphere in that church, whether they realize it or not. Because when sinners come in, this is kind of the atmosphere, atmosphere they've created. And they don't feel worthy enough to be saved in our churches. They don't feel worthy enough to come to our altars. That somehow immediately they get that mindset, I cannot measure up. I've got news for you, friend, that every human in this building was a cesspool in the sight of God before you came in contact with the blood and through the mighty cleansing power of the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen, somebody. But the Apostle Paul was writing to some former bad, unclean, vile sinners in the church at Corinth. He said to them in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? And he began to name sin. Come on now. He said, not, he said neither fornicators. He said, you, you, you young people, not only young people only, but you young people because that's an epidemic in the modern church is fornication among teenagers. We've got a church here in the Charlotte area that's supposedly a Pentecostal church, a Bible-based church, where the pastor stood up and made the statement in his congregation, and he said, he said, you talk about young people and their sin, what they're doing. He said, I'm telling you that young boys will be boys. He was giving them permission to commit fornication and said, boys will be boys. Yes, they will. And boys will go to hell, sir. I'm just telling you, the Apostle Paul said, neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers. Come on now. It's amazing to me in the modern church. I was sharing with a brother the other day. Now, I, I, I'm not one just to find fault. And I'm not condescending. I, I know that without the blood of Jesus, Turner would be in trouble this morning. But I was talking to a brother the other day. He was referring to a situation. I said, the problem with that is is, is that man went to the mission field and on the mission field he took up with his interpreter a Russian lady interpreter and he, and he took up and went to having relationship a relationship with her committed adultery with her he divorced his wife from his of his youth he walked away from his wife and his children and his grandchildren divorced her married the Russian interpreter and never missed a beat in the ministry do you hear me I'm telling you what that is 
says that is adultery. Say amen, somebody. Well, preacher, don't you believe in forgiveness? I do. But I'm going to tell you what I believe. In a situation like that, yes, when people are in sin and they've committed adultery and they, they've done wrong, then the blood of Jesus washes out away. Come on now. And there, there is fellowship in Christ. But when you do that in the church, brother, you've got to make that right because that you can repent of it all. You How on God's earth did I get on this? I'm preaching on the name of Jesus. But every night you crawl in the bed with that, I don't care how many times you've asked for forgiveness, you commit adultery, 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 and you can't make that right unless you get that right. Say amen. He said, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. He went on, not thieves, nor covetous, or drunkards, or or revelers, or extortion, nor shall inherit the kingdom of God. Oh man, I'm telling you, he's preaching, isn't he? But he looked out there and said, but such were some of you. But now you're washed, you're sanctified, you're justified by the name of the Lord Jesus and the Spirit of God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something else. I'm going to back up here. It may make somebody upset with me, but that won't be the first time. He said effeminate and abusers of themselves with mankind. And if you will study that pretty close, I'll tell you what he's talking about, homosexuals. Some, the word gets a little harder, sodomite, say amen, somebody. But I'm going I'm, to mess with some of your theology. They can and are being forgiven if they repent and forsake their sin and are washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help me preach somebody. Somebody said, I don't believe it. Well, don't believe it. I'm going to preach that this mighty name and through his mighty name that every man, woman, boy, and girl that truly repents and turns from their evil way can be born again into the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? Oh, help me preach somebody. You see, there's no other name that can forgive me. There's no other name that can cleanse me or can sanctify me but the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thought Brother Sullivan was going to get, get to preaching my whole message the other night when he's talking about the name of Jesus. But I, I'm telling you what a name. You know, listen, folks, I, I love that. I, I, I don't want to just keep... I don't say it very often, and people who know me know that. But I was a filthy sinner. I was a drug addict. I was a drug pusher. And one night I went into that church. They had to help me in the building. One on one side and one on the other lift. Help me walk into the building. I was so high on angel dust. I didn't hardly know where I was, but I knew where I wanted to be. I knew that. I was in a drunken stupor and high on drugs. And I'm going to tell you that night, it wasn't no fat belly. Buddha that washed my sins away. It was not Mohammed that gave me life eternal shame and no, no it was not Christian and it wasn't the many armed elephant God Ganesh. Shame and somebody but he said in Acts 4 and 12 neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Thank God forevermore. There's not many ways in there's not many paths there's one way Jesus I don't know if you remember the lady on the train in Europe and she found out we were preachers we were all traveling my wife my girls brother and sister Shortridge Matthew mama and Patsy we were all traveling the trains This lady sitting there, she was living in Florida, but she had an Orthodox background, an European Orthodox background, Eastern European. Found out we were preachers, a nice lady, but lost. And she said, oh, she said, I just happen to believe that, you know, in this world, that no matter what you believe, that if you believe in something good, if you believe in Buddha, 
If you believe in this, oh, as long as it's something good, that you'll be all right. You know what? I never got mad. I never, I wasn't ugly in my response. I'm telling you, I was just as nice as could be. But I said to her, but ma'am, I said, we're Pentecostal preachers. That makes a difference, don't it? I'm on the plane. They say, what are you? I said, well, I'm a preacher. Oh, really? I, then I turn around and say, what kind? I said, I'm a Pentecostal preacher. And then I usually add, but I'm not the television kind. Come on now. And I said to her, we're Pentecostal preachers. And I said, that means that we believe the Bible is the infallible, inerrant word of God. And I said, because we believe that, then we believe that there's only one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and through the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I said, if we believe that, then that means we got to go tell the world that Jesus saves. Can you say amen? No other name under heaven given among men. But you know what's wonderful about that name, especially this time when the church has got an epidemic of, of sickness and disease that's come against the body of Christ. It's absolutely amazing. Is that that name is above all sickness and disease. The problem with the incarnation was that if you wanted to be healed, you had to get where Jesus was. Or at least somebody had to go on your behalf. Like the Jairus had to go on behalf of his daughter. And if you couldn't get there, somebody didn't carry you in a cot or a cart or uh, let you down through a roof and you couldn't get to Jesus uh, or somebody didn't go on your behalf, then you, then you were in trouble. But after his ascension and after the Holy Ghost filled those believers in that upper room and then they were spread across the known world, I'm telling you, Jesus was everywhere. Come on now. I said Jesus was everywhere. What do you mean, preacher? He went up and sat at the right hand of God. But I'm telling you, and again, if I could explain this, I'd write a book. But when the Holy Ghost came and filled those believers, uh, that Jesus was everywhere. Everywhere they went, uh, from the far corners of the earth and mud huts and jungles. And, oh, help me preach somebody. That is the wonderful mystery. Jesus said, I must go away. And if I go away, I'll send you another country. Comforter. I'll send you an advocate. I, I, he said, I'm coming back again. He wasn't just talking about a rapture. He said, I'm going to live in every one of you. I'm going to be everywhere now. And, and he came. Listen, he told them in John 14, 13, that whatsoever you shall ask in my name, I'll do it. That the Son, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. It's time for the church to quit making excuses. It's time for the church to quit backing up. It's time for the church to say, oh well, we just, I'm just telling you, he said, if ye ask anything in my name I will do it. It all goes back to praying in the Spirit and letting the Spirit pray through us according to the will of Almighty God. Peter and John on their way to the prayer meeting. Listen, Jesus undoubtedly passed that way before, but today Peter and John's on their way to the hour of prayer. There's a lame man by the gate, and when they go by he said alms for the poor and they said hey buddy we're Pentecostal preachers don't have any silver or gold but such as I have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and he reached out and took him by the hand and his ankle bones received strength and he went into the temple with them walking and leaping and praising God can somebody say amen you say, oh, preacher, that, that is so wonderful. But you know, you're talking about Bible days. But Bible days aren't over, my friend. Because unlike what, uh, doc, oh, listen, unlike what Dr. Icicle on the Moody Station from the first church of the refrigerator says, uh, that the Holy Ghost was only for the disciples. Uh, and, and that when John died and passed away, that the Holy Ghost baptism uh, no longer existed in 
in the church or was no longer a part. I beg your pardon, sir. I received the same glorious baptism in the Holy Ghost as the Apostle John did one night in the Palmer Church of God. Amen. 30 some plus years ago. He didn't die with John. He didn't expire with John. He's still working today. We were in Mar del Plata, Argentina, in the church right outside of the city. And in that church there, they were having revival in those days, actually across Argentina. Now, all of it wasn't real, but a lot of it was real. We were preaching there, and God was moving in this particular place. The building was full. The Batania Church, the, the building, people, I, I remember that night, there were a lot of the youth choir, had a big youth choir. And a lot of that youth choir had come up to pray to receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Must have been 150 of them. And during that, I, I didn't know 10 words of Spanish, but I can tell you this. They were praying in Spanish, and they were crying and praying. You couldn't get out there. And it was a massive sea of, of people seeking. But I, I saw this. I'm telling you, when they went from Spanish to the Holy Ghost, I knew the difference. Amen. I said, I knew the difference. But after that all subsided and the service had concluded, we were getting ready to leave. The team was ready to leave. A lady comes up. She was known to all the church. She had been in a car accident. She had braces from here to here. I mean, she's messed up. She, her back twisted, uh, her spine, one leg about three inches shorter than the other. They knew she was crippled from the accident and according to man, should never be any better. And she comes up and says, I, I want you to pray that the Lord would heal me. I'll never forget saying to the interpreter, do you believe that Jesus will heal you tonight? Uh, and she said, I do. Well, all the team, it wasn't one person but all the team laid hands and prayed for her in the mighty name of Jesus. Nobody told her to do anything. We prayed and we started to leave. But unbeknowing to us, she had gone behind the stage to a room and on her own, she pulled out every, pulled off every brace on her body. I'm telling you, when she walked back in there, she was as well as you are, brother. Her leg, had, her leg was as long as the other one. Her back was healed. Her neck was healed her body was made whole and all these years later when we were back there two years ago they said all oh, the story of the great miracle of God's working power you know why because his name is above sickness and disease demons tremble at that name come on As we come and approach the near coming of Jesus and at the close of this hour that we're living in, demonic activity will increase. I said it will increase. But that power is over every other power. Come on now. I'll never forget years ago. There was a family that lived in the valley. They were Baptist people, good folks, Baptist folks. And they sent word through my sister. Their son had been put in the mental ward of a hospital. To the best of my remembrance, I'm telling this from many years gone by, but to the best of my remembrance, for about 40 days he had not eaten. He wasn't fasting. He couldn't eat. <coughs> He would not speak. He couldn't speak. And they had put, locked him away in a middle ward of a hospital. <coughs> and they said, would your brother go pray for our son? We believe it's demonic. That's the family. They're Baptist and Baptist pastor don't believe in the demonic then. But I'd sought the Lord. And so I was preaching in the same city. So Gwen and I went by and we got there to the hospital, went to the level of the mental ward, the floor of the mental ward, and the door is a big metal door and they have to unlock it to let you in. Gwen said, I believe I'll sit right out here. You go on in. <laughs> so I go in, follow the nurse on down the hallway, and she takes me into this room. Now, I've seen this young man in years past, big, healthy young man, but I'm telling you, I wasn't expecting to see what I saw. He looked like a skeleton in a pair of pajamas. 
He lost so much weight. His eye sockets were just that, just sockets. He, he, he looked like a skeleton with stre- skin stretched over it. It had the wildest look in his eyes. And I walk in, I'm just a young preacher, and I walk in, and I'm talking to him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to deal with me what to tell him, the reason that he had allowed the demonic to get such a hold on his life, what he'd been doing. And I just told him what I believe God told me to tell him. He never said anything. And I, he just didn't respond. And finally, I just kept talking. I said, do these things talk to you? I'm telling you the voice that came out. He said, yes, they do. I walked around to the side of that bed. I'm just a young preacher, a young believer, a young preacher. I hadn't been preaching that long. But I did believe in that name of Jesus. And I walked around to the side of that bed and I said, in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, devil, I command you to come out of him in the name of Jesus. And what I'm going to tell you is this truth before God Almighty is if he come right now, I'd have to stand before him. I watched something under his pajama top start here in his belly. It was moving. I used to explain that. I can't explain it. I'm just telling you that thing began to move. You could see it under his pajamas. It was coming up. When it got in his throat, it like to choked him to death. And I'm thinking, my God, he's going to die here. Me standing here with him. And I raised my hands to heaven and I cried out, Jesus! In the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of him and loose him and let him go. I'm telling you before God, that thing came out of him. He sat up on the edge of the bed in his right mind. And I went out and found the nurse. And I said, Ricky's going to be eating today. And she said, I'll go get him some food. And it wasn't long till they sent him home, brother. Come on now. That name is above every name that is named. Hallelujah. To God Almighty. Oh, help me preach this morning. Thank God. This world needs the name of Jesus. There is healing in his name. The church is empowered to do signs and wonders in his name. He said, In my name, he said, In those, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Say amen. James said in 5 and 14, Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You say, preacher, why is there so much sickness? Or why aren't people, I'm just here to tell you. I, I, I don't have all the answers, but I do have this. And I, I'm not here to speculate. I'm not here to question God. I, I'm, I'm just here to say what the Bible said, that in his name there is healing. In his name there is deliverance. Can you say amen? It is also a name that is above every trial and battle of life. Joshua in the fifth chapter was getting ready to go to battle and I'm telling you they were in a heap of trouble even before they, the first uh, lick was laying. I mean they, they, they're in trouble. And Joshua knows they're in trouble. He gets a little aside from everybody. He's going to talk to God. But all of a sudden, he sees somebody. He looks over with his eyes, and he sees a man standing not too far away with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua goes over there and says to the man, said, Hey, are you for us, or are you for our adversaries? And the man said to him, he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? And Joshua Joshua would think, wait a minute, I'm not talking to, to, I'm not just talking to an angel here. And he falls down and begins to worship him. Who's he talking to, preacher? He's talking to the Old Testament Christ. Amen. How do you know it wasn't an angel? Because the, the man did not rebuke him when he worshiped him. In fact, the man said, he said, pull off your shoe, for the ground that you stand on is holy ground. I've got news this morning. When we face the battle of life and the trial, the darkest hour of our life, we are not alone. The Bible, oh, that old song says, somewhere in the shadow you'll find Jesus. His name is Emmanuel.
well. His name is Mighty God. His name is Prince of Peace. His name is Counselor. of the host of the Lord. I've got news for you. He is that rock that followed them in that desert. He was the Lord high and lifted up in Isaiah's day. And you know, the old writer said he was the fourth man in the fiery furnace when they came out without even the smell of smoke on their garments. Hallelujah to God. But not only is he the name that is above all name in every trial and situation. You know, I, I, I'm going to back up. You know, I, I, there's been times, and I don't know if you've ever had this to happen to you, and you may think I'm weird, but I, and I'm not one of those that sees a demon behind every tree, and I'm not, I'm not battling spiritual. I, I am battling the spiritual every day, but I'm just telling you I'm not uh, one of those who I'm obsessed with that. But I'm telling you, brother, there's been times, and I don't know if you've ever experienced it, in the night you know and my wife she finally tried to wake me up and, and something come against me in the night in, in my sleep and I, I, I can see a form or darkness and I know that it's not right there's something bad it's the devil and you say preacher you're just what you ate no I'm telling you it's happened more at once more than once and I'm trying to say Jesus but I can't say it I, and she says you know she said you're over there going eh, eh, eh. I, well, I was trying to get the name of Jesus out, and I'm trying to spit it out. I'm trying to say it, and, and that thing is the oppression, the darkness, and whatever that is. But all of a sudden, I cry out, Jesus! Hallelujah! And in His mighty name, it's gone. It disappears. It, the victory's been won. I don't care, folks. If you if you have to whisper His name, whisper it. If you've got to sign His name, I don't know how you do that. Sign His name. If you've got to spell it, J E S U S, then spell His name because there is power in the mighty name of Jesus. I said, preacher, come on, listen. I, I, I remember a time I was driving. I was a young Christian. And I'm driving my, I got a 1972 K5 Blazer with the big old tires on it. I'm going down the road. I, I, I mean, I'm driving that little town toward the little town of Palmer. And uh, I, as I'm driving along, I don't know what my mind was on. It was Jesus, I believe that. I, he had just saved me and delivered me and changed my life. As I'm driving that old big K5 Blazer down the road uh, when I look up a car stopped right dead in front of me I mean I'm going too fast to stop uh, I can't go to the right because of, uh, of the bank uh, in the road uh, I can't go forward because I'm going to kill me or him or somebody or all of us uh, and you know what I did uh, I mean in an instant of time uh, I said Jesus I'm here to tell you I don't know how it happened uh, but the next thing I know uh, I didn't hit the car I didn't hit the bank beside me, but I'm around him and in front of him and going my merry way. Oh, you say, you say what you will. I'm telling you there is power, wonder working power in the mighty name of Jesus. That name is above all poverty and need. I do not buy into the lie that Christians are supposed to all be rich. Propagated by the money hounds on Christian, so-called Christian television. Some of the richest Christians I've ever met in this world couldn't afford a bicycle. 
They were rich in God. But I also know, that, know this, that the Word of God teaches that every need will be supplied. Matthew 6, 26, he said, Behold the fowls of the air. They do not sow, neither do they reap, nor gather in barns, but your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are not you much better than they? I'm glad I'm better than the sparrow. Can you say amen? He said, take thought of the rain, your raiment. Why take thought of it? Consider the lily of the field, how they grow. They toll not, neither do they spin. He said, you're much better than the lily of the field. We had to learn that early on in Christian life and Christian ministry. When I started out evangelizing, I, could, I didn't have, have even have a travel trailer. We carried our girls around in the back of an old station wagon and finally graduated up to a van. We stayed in other people's travel trailers and with their pet cockroaches. You say, what do you mean they're pets? Well, they must have been. They didn't try to kill them. But boy, my wife did. She'd send me to the store first off, brother. I mean, come back. I'm ready for battle. She, but we learned that early on. We learned that what it was like to evangelize. And you, when the Walmart started spreading around, our kids were young. The first thing we wanted to know when we walked in, can we, can we buy something? Can we get something? And, but when Gwen and I were very young, starting out, me evangelizing, the old car that we had was a piece of junk. I'm going to quit here real quick. But a piece of junk. And in fact, it was such a piece of junk, if, I, if my memory serves me right, that when we'd go around a sharp curve, too sharp, it'd die. Just quit. It did not like extreme turns. We knew what it was like to go to a Start out to go into a meeting knowing you might have enough gas to get there. But friend, if they didn't help you, you didn't have enough to get home. That's why I tell them now, if God blesses me now, I don't care what people say about me, I'm going to enjoy it. Amen. So I said, you know, I got the bright idea. I'm going to move up. I'm going to evangelize. I got to have a good car. So I got an 81 Dodson. And so in that 81 Dodson came a payment book. Well, I already had a mobile home payment. So I got insurance payment on the car and a mobile home payment and insurance on the mobile home. And so we, we've got to, you know, pay the electric bill and the water bill. And I'm telling you, the meetings were not that many. I, I, I'm just not a lot of meetings. I didn't start out with the full schedule. I started preaching in a country where New Jerusalem, little Jerusalem's not too far away and they'd already compromised so much that not many people wanted to hear what I had to say. You can figure that out a little bit later if you like. So I didn't get a whole lot of meetings in my home state. But what meetings I had, I went and preached the word of God. And, and uh, you know, so uh, it come to a place of spirit a point where there, the, the meeting was so scarce and the offerings were so small that my bills began to pile up. And, and you know, I've always been very, very attentive to my credit and my bills. And, and I'm troubled. And I, Gwen and I are not, we haven't been married a long, long time. And so we're, we're, I'm going out preaching and we're trying to do the will of God. And now we've got these payments and, and, and there's no money to pay them. And it got real bad. And I mean real, real bad. And I was praying and I, I, I was crying out in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm, I'm gonna, I need a miracle. I need finances. I need a revival. I need somewhere to preach in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you said if we ask anything in your name, well, you'd give it to us. Well, I got a call from one of the local churches, the Holiness Church. In fact, it's got it in its name, the title, Holiness Church. I'm not going to tell you the rest of it, but the pastor invited me to come 
preach on Sunday morning. I thought, man, maybe going to get a little help, keep the lights on, pay the water bill, or eat. So I go down to preach at the Holiness Church on Sunday morning. And I'm there getting ready to preach, and a man that I've never seen before stands up all of a sudden, and he's testifying. He said, God told me you had a need. Well, I, I believe God told him that because I had a need. But he didn't, you know, he didn't do anything. Well, I preached that morning. I started out. I, I, I'm not doing it for money. I can tell you I'd be in a business of something else if it was about money. And so I started out. And guess what? They never even gave me the offering, brother. I, I mean, not only am I in need and I'm in trouble and I'm needing finances, but I am preached that morning and the preacher never even gave me the offering. So I go out. My heart's heavy. I'm telling you we're disheartened. We're thinking, oh, God, what's going on here? But about the time I put that Dotson in reverse and backed up to leave the parking lot, here comes that same man. Brother, he's got a wad of money that thick rolled up in his hand, and he shoves it in that window, and he said, God told me you had a need. Hallelujah. And in 1982, he paid every bill. Can somebody say amen? I'm telling you that there is power in his name, and it is above all, all need. In closing, that name is above all names. It's worthy to be praised and to be worshipped in this hour when the modern Pentecostal church has to be pumped and primed and have worship leaders and worship teams and come on now and all of this to try to get people to worship him I remember a time as a boy when they had no such I'm not saying it's wrong to have it I'm just telling you when they didn't have such things that people worship God anyhow they came in the church worshiping God they got out of the car in the parking lot worshiping God and if you went to their house on any given day you could hear them in there praising and magnifying and praising the mighty name that is above every name. Just get ready to play in a minute. I'll be conscious that you're there, so I'll hurry. The world worshiped many gods and has for thousands of years. But he said in Hebrews 13, 15, by him, therefore, let us offer up the sacrifice of praise to God, what? Continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to what? To his name. We ought to praise him all day long. We ought to wake up in the middle of the night and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You see, but one of these days, I've got news for the world. They'll worship him. They're gods no more. They'll, they'll not bow to them any longer. It is, there are one billion plus Muslims in this world who pray to Allah, the moon god. It is not Jehovah, I must inform you, but Allah, the moon god, and Muhammad is prophet. But they did not die for humanity, say. Amen. There are hundreds of millions of Buddhists, Buddhists that worship old fat Buddha every day of the year. Even movie stars fly over there so they can bow down to old fat Buddha. But I'm telling you, you can, you can say the name of Buddha one million times, but it won't heal anybody. Come on now. Oh, yes, sir. There are hundreds and hundreds of millions of Hindus that, that pray to Ganesh and a million other gods. You know, Oh, but you can say the name Ganesh starting today and if you lived a hundred years you could say Ganesh, Ganesh, Ganesh and it would never heal anybody. Help me preach somebody and I may shock some here today or by internet or wherever but there's a billion plus Catholics that pray to and put the name of Mary above the Lord Jesus Christ himself but as wonderful and great a person that Mary was folks you can pray to and pray Praise her name all you want, but it will never bring one single miracle. Come on, say amen, somebody. Because there is none other name but the name of Jesus. He is alone. He alone is wonderful and counselor. He alone is the lily of the valley. He alone is the rose of Sharon. He alone is a stem of Jesse and the plant of renown and a root out of a dry ground. It is the mighty, matchless, wonderful name of Jesus. He is the bride and the morning star. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And when all the world and all of its devices have been in hell a billion years, there will still be the name of Jesus. But the Bible said he is 
has given him a name above every name. Somebody say amen. Men may despise him. They may forbid it in the school system. They may forbid it in the military and the government. But there will never be another name like his. Fools may deny that he exists. They may deny that he had anything to do with the heavens and the earth and all that in them is. But I've got news for him today. He created it with the span of his hand. And not only did he create it, but he knows every star by their name. Can somebody say praise the Lord? He, the Son of God, was there when the planets were formed and when he plugged them into their orb. Can somebody say amen? And the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. He was there when the seas were put into their boundary and he said, come no further. He's the one that created. He put the red on the red bird. He put the blue on the blue bird. He cut the song in the canary's mouth to sing. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? He was there. Listen, folks. I am not the result of millions of years of evolution coming from an ape or a monkey. But the Bible said that I have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Wondrously made. Why? Because he made me and created me. They may reject him, my friend. But thank God one day in Philippians 2 and 10, he said at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess and everything that is in the earth and under the earth. I'm not going to wait till then. I'm going to bow now. I'm going to praise him now. I'm going to give him glory now. I'm going to give him honor now because I have been bought with a price and have been brought into the kingdom by the matchless, wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, come on, stand up. Give him praise. Give him honor. Give him glory. What a name. What a name. One day. One day. Anybody ever seen that guy, Stephen Hawkins, the the genius, you know, he's in a wheelchair and talks through some kind of device. He had said he has the greatest mind of anybody living on earth today, but he's an atheist. He doesn't believe in God. But one of these days, old Hawkins is going to fall out of that wheelchair and bow before that wonderful name of Jesus. What's amazing about it is they claim everybody that goes and sees the Queen of England has got to do the little curtsy and the little bow. But one of these days, the lady that cleans my hotel room right alongside the Queen of England is going to get down together and bow before the mighty name that's above every name. Mr. Gates, with all of your billions, that you could buy anything in this world, anything. But one of these days, Mr. Gates, you are gonna bow down to that name that's above every name. Yes, you are. Mr. Obama, Mr. Bush, Mr. Clinton, Hillary, one of these days, that old proud heart, you're going to have to bow down. But the ditch digger and the well digger can bow before his wonderful name. But you know what? Let it go on record today. Before that happens, old Turner's going to be bowing before him every day in prayer.
Take my word again. Hold on to it. Fight for your deliverance. Don't give in. Don't give out. Don't give up. Keep fighting because I will do what I said if you'll just hold on long enough, saith the Lord. I preach way, way too long. Raise your hands and give him glory one more time. Thank him that the church has been given a name that nobody else in this world can have. Nobody else can use. Nobody else has access to the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Shake somebody's hand and say, I believe there's power in the name of Jesus. somebody else he'll do it for me I believe if I heard anything today I heard you gotta hold on you can't let go you gotta stay true to your faith God help me I claim it now in the name of Jesus I claim it now if you need a healing just say I claim it in the name of Jesus what a message that's what it's all about it's about Him. When we start concentrating on our own self, we get in trouble. We just need to concentrate on ourselves to better ourselves. That's what the concentration needs to be. We all can move up. There's none of a share that cannot move up. I need to move up. I need more of God. And you never get it all. You never get it all. You can think you've arrived and Paul mentioned that. Forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forth to the things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He said in Luke 16 and 16, the law and the prophets were till John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. The kingdom of God is preached. You preach faith to me, Brother Turner. You preach faith to me today. And every man presseth into it. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm claiming my healing today. I'm claiming it. I, I'm claiming it in the name of Jesus. I've got to have it, and I believe it. I want you to say, I claim victory in Jesus' name. I claim victory in the name of the Son of God with power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Heal, brother, may God. He's got a heart condition. The doctors can't help him, but you're the great physician. You're the bomb of Gilead. You're the bomb of Gilead. Hallelujah. Jesus is in this place. We can come here and nothing happens if we come alone. But if he comes with us, if he's in the choir, if he's in the band, if he's in the pews, if he's in the pulpit, things got to happen. Wherever he went, it, things were changed. Things happened. That's what we got to have today. That's what the church world is dying for is a revelation of the Son of God with power. Raise your hands and praise Him one more time. Just magnify His name. Hallelujah. Sister Boland's got blood pressures up. Let's pray right now. God touch her, the, ma the mother of our church. Right now, heal her. Let that blood pressure go down in the name of Jesus. Instantly, we claim it. We're not invoking your name for without a cause, there's a cause. David said, is there not a cause when he faced Goliath? There's a cause here. Bring it down 
in the name of Jesus Christ by the healing power. Thank you now. Thank you now. Raise your hands and praise him one more time. Thank you, Jesus. I think it'd be good just to come around the front here. And before we leave, let's just praise God a few minutes and pray. We need to take a little time, just a few minutes here. God's going to help us and God's going to touch us. I believe it. I claim victory in Jesus' name through the mighty power of the Holy Ghost. Kings and kingdoms. Yes, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Something about that name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Him, church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I believe it, God. I believe it. I believe it. I claim your victory. I claim your victory. Whatever you need, it's yours this morning. It's yours this morning. Praise His holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your holy name, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. We pray for Brother C.C. Allen, Jr., a man of God, and he started getting better after we prayed and going to go home tomorrow. This is what the church is about. It's about revelation. You can't have no more than your revelation. And the closer you get to him, the greater your revelation will be. Amen. Praise the Lord. Why are we like we are? God revealed himself to us through his son. When God chose to reveal himself in the apostle Paul, he became the man of God that he was. But he didn't get it till he had the revelation. You got to see it to do it. God bless you. Shake hands. Love each other. Come back tonight early. You better get here early. Get a seat. I believe it.